In this video, we'll be covering QB Scribe's scorecard and scoring mechanics. In the previous video, we paused at the screen after we ran our first analysis and learned what was being analyzed. Now let's take a look at what exactly lives within this view. Starting at the top, we have three tabs, quality analysis, consistency, and similarity. You saw the same headings from the previous video, but let's stick to this tab for this video. Under those tabs, you will see the following. A date stamp of when you ran your last analysis, the issues pull down field that sorts the analysis based on the found issues, and a count of viewable requirements. Next, you'll see the overall score for the requirements that were analyzed. And beside that, we have the total amount of quality warnings that were detected within those requirements. All right, so here's the area with the most interest. There are four columns. The first is the analyze requirement column, where like the name suggests, are where your freshly analyzed requirements are held. Next to it, we find your score for each individual requirement. In the third column, we have the quality warning icon. If you recall from the last video, there are four issues that contribute to these warnings. Let's quickly jump back into that video for a refresher. So you see there are 11 indicators that affect the scoring and four that do not. Perfect. Let's get back to the scorecard. Lastly, we have this X. And if you remember from the first video, this was so that we could remove or unmark this requirement from the analysis. Good. Now let's dive a little deeper into each requirement. When I click on the arrow, I'm going to see the issues found with this requirement. We see that both quality score and quality warning headings within the identified issue. Beside that is what caused that issue and as what we call the problem phrases. Lastly, if you noticed that when I clicked on the requirement to show more information parts of the requirement within the document were now highlighted. Those highlights correspond with the problem phrases. Perfect. Let's move down to the bottom of the scorecard. Here you'll, you will see four buttons. The first brings you back to the marking phase. If you go back to the marking screen at any point, all the requirements will need to be reanalyzed for any changes made. Next, you see the generate report button that will give you access to generate a PDF report, which we will explore in a different video. The next two buttons deal with if you made any changes to the requirements after you analyze them. This is great as you don't have to go back to the marking screen if you want to make changes. Let me demonstrate this. Let's take the first requirement. It reads, the Lunar Exploration Light Rover shall be designed to be upgradable to transport one EVA suited crew member. Now let's make some changes to this requirement to try and improve the score. Let's try, the Lunar Exploration Light Rover design shall be upgradable to transport one EVA suited crew member. Now we need to reanalyze the current requirement to reflect the changes. As you can see, the requirement is updated and the score has changed. The same process applies when you change multiple requirements. You would press the reanalyze all button instead. In the case of when you need to add requirements, you would then have to press back to marking to mark the new requirements so that they can be included in the analysis. I think this is a good time to pause as we have learned about the quality analysis tab and gone over how to use it and view the problem phrases. Now let's look at what the bars mean and how to interpret the scores. So the one bar, one bar scores are the highest risk requirements. They lack an imperative or contain multiple imperatives and or contain excessive vague terms. These types of requirements could lead to poor testability, rework and misinterpretation. To remedy the one bar, you may consider rewriting the requirement or separating into multiple concise requirements. Two bars. Two bar scores have multiple major problems. These could include instances of vague or subjective or weak terms and or even negative imperatives. To remedy the two bar, you must replace negative or ambiguous terms with clear and concise terms. Three bars. You're on your way to a great score here. 
Issues with three bar requirements have a singular issue. They may have a single vague, subjective, or weak term and or a single negative imperative. To remedy the three bar, you must do the same as the two bar. Replace a negative or ambiguous term with a clear and concise term. The four bar, you're in the green and only minor problems are found here. Take a look at the excessive use of continuances and or making sure that there are no directives. To remedy this and aim for that five bar score, check the flow and clarity of the requirement. The five bar, congratulations, there are no problems found here based on the used configuration. I must state that we still need to make sure that the context of the requirement is clearly understood. Warnings. Lastly, warnings have those four main issues we discussed earlier. Every organization is different and have variances and tolerance for warnings. So you can review and do your best to adjust the requirement or leave it as is. Well, congratulations. You now have knowledge of the quality analysis tab and know how to interpret our scores. In the next video, I'll be covering consistency analysis.